Hello everyone, I'm Debiria from Debiria's Naturals and Kesuska Evolutionary Empowerment. And I'm going to do an energy check-in for you. We're going to do a um, Twin Flame energy check-in for my lovely lovelies who are on the Twin Flame journey. So let's see what these energies have in store for you. We're going to first check the energy of Divine Masculine on this Twin Flame journey. We're going to explore Divine Feminine's energy and then the energy of the Union. So, for my lovely collective on this Twin Flame journey, could you give me the energy of the Divine Masculine? I'm feeling like I'm being called to use a different deck of cards and maybe to use this as clarifiers. So let me heed the call, you guys. And give me a second to get another deck of cards. I'm hearing to use the Chakra Wisdom Oracle deck. And I feel like I'm being called to use this particular deck of cards. Because, you know, your chakra is... Your chakras are the system, the energy vortexes in the body that bring everything into alignment. Your spirit... It brings your um, mental space, your consciousness into an alignment. It regulates the major organ functions in the body. And we're talking about Divine Masculine here. And, you know, Divine Masculine been doing his divine work, his shadow work. He's been doing a lot of growth and development. And you guys, you got to give props to these masculines because it has not been an easy journey for them either our perceptions that they have had it easy or oh he's just having fun with his guys or he's just having fun with the karmics or he, all he focuses on is his money that is so 3d thinking you guys they are on a spiritual journey just like you are they are experiencing these downloads and these integrations and these upgrades in um spiritual energy and consciousness expansion they're experiencing these heightened intuitive ex um heightened intuitive i was gonna say experiences <laughs> they're experiencing the experiences <laughs> so the weird shit that you've been going through like with the dreams and the mood swings the random shifts in emotions they've been experiencing that too they're human they're not emotionless and they may be a little more calm and cool on the surface than you are but you gotta pay attention to how you may appear to them they're going through this and they're feeling like absolutely bonkers and you look like oh I make this shit look easy because <laughs> Because no one sees what you're doing, Divine Feminine, behind closed doors. Divine Feminine has been hermiting. Divine Feminine has been doing this secret glow-up energy. Divine Feminine has been focusing on herself, self-love, self-healing. Um, Divine Feminine has also stopped spying on Divine Masculine. Um, that's a, It's a phase. It's a phase. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a phase. I mean, you love somebody, you pay attention to what they're doing. He's spying, he was spying on you, too. Um... <laughs> How was he spying on you? He had a homeboy roll past your house. His cousin lived next door to your grandma's sister's cousin. I mean, he was spying on you. Social media, his fake accounts. Baby mama got an account that baby mama best friend is friends with you on Facebook. And you don't know that that's baby mama best friend. And so, baby mama best friend on there looking at your page. And you like, let me borrow your phone. He looking at your, you looking at your page too. So, I mean, you know, twins have a tendency to check up on each other. Just to see where they are on their journey. And that's what that is. It's not like I'm spying maliciously and creepily. That's different. That's a whole other situation, you guys. That I'm not telling you it's okay to be stalking nobody and stuff. What I'm just saying is you share a soul energy. And when you're um, connected that way and you're trying to learn how to understand the connection, then the best way to do that is learn to understand yourself. But you don't learn that until you realize that you've been focused, overly focused on understanding the other person. When... You share soul energy, so understanding yourself is understanding how to connect better and how to uh, integrate with the same differences 
as the other person because they're your equal and they're your opposite simultaneously and vice versa you're that to them so let's get the energy of divine masculine but my point is the reason why i keep saying that you're gonna stop spying on divine masculine is because a lot of feminists being in like multiple tarot readings and it's been causing you to get very non spirit when we talk to y'all been calling y'all y'all to get kind of confused or overwhelmed because okay get one good reading and you like okay you know i resonate with that but then you get get 40 good readings because youtube is an abundant source of information and there's misinformation out there also and then there are people who are saying the word twin flame and are not on a twin flame journey so have no absolutely no idea they can read the energy sure they can read the energy but they don't really understand what it is so is if and i'm sure most of some readers won't tell you that they're actually on the journey but if you're on the journey you can pretty much tell if the reader's on the journey too. Um, there's a, because those readers are healers. Those readers are teachers. Those readers are, they may be wounded healers, but they're healers. You know, they might have gone through some, their share of things, but that gives them the authority to speak on it. If you have never had any experience on something, how can you say anything to me? So you can read my energy and you never experience what I've gone through. Then all you can offer me is information that I already have. You're just reading to me what's already going on in my life. And, and as based on that energy and, um, a prediction if they give you a prediction because you pay attention you don't get predictions too often they have to not just be a seer but they have to be a foreseer someone with foresight someone who has a prophetic gift a seer can see that's all they can't they don't necessarily predict they can give you possibilities but a prophet is a whole different thing so anyway the point is somebody needs to know that there was a difference and there are some People who are using this as a tool who are also prophets and teachers and healers who have multiple um, hats that they wear. And many divine feminists have multiple hats that they wear because, and, and so do the divine masculines. They have multiple hats that they wear. Like you're seeing this face. But, but that's a persona and they're this person with that person and this person with that group and that person with this group. And everyone only gets a piece of you. But who gets the real true authentic you you first got to discover who that is before you can share that person with anyone including your twin flame but they're the person that you feel the most comfortable to be um like the scripture says naked and not ashamed like adam and eve are naked and not ashamed vulnerable open um transparent let me the energy of divine masculine please for my collective Angel Divine Masculine, my loves, is destiny. This person knows that you guys are destined to be together. And this card right here is very interesting to me. I'm going to leave it up here for a second while I tell you about it. This card actually speaks of the Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine in the, in the etheric realm in heaven. And these people are asking the elders and their ancestors, you see, that looks like uh, someone who represents a monk or someone who represents Moses or an ancient ancestor or something and you see this yin and yang energy with this black and white they're both kneeling and they're accepting this assignment and but they're asking can we be together can we be together this time can we be together in this dimension can we be together now yeah we'll go do the mission can we be together can we, can I can I fall in love with this person? Can I learn from this person? Can this be my mentor? Can can I have a partner on this journey? I don't. I, I've done some solo missions on Earth before. Can I have a partner on this solo mission? And <laughs> let me look this card up, guys, because I want to make sure I got the story right. I remember that part. Oh, here it is. It's saying black and white. Together we are stronger than alone. And this is the energy divine masculine is in. Together. It's destiny card together we are stronger than alone okay so black and white are in heaven waiting to go back to earth yet again so they've been here multiple times this is speaking of the twin flame connection and that many of us have manifested multiple times whether individually as individually separate in separate dimensions separate time frames um, one aspect of self came this time, another aspect came another time, or they came together as one soul, but they didn't necessarily interact with each other. They're asking, on this mission, can we be together? 
It's saying um, black and white are in heaven waiting to go back to earth yet again to complete their work. When they meet and fall in love, they learn that they will not be together on earth. In previous lives, their love was ill-fated. They appeal to the council of great spirits who turn down their request to be together. But the great servant appears and grants their wish. Together, they accomplish greater things than they could have done alone. So, there have, may have been times when you thought, in a past life or in past situations in this life, or the past person that you were in this life, if I'm masculine, I felt like there's no way we could be together. We're from two different worlds. Divine feminine, this part ain't about you. <laughs> Divine masculine is in the energy of I asked, I prayed, just like you asked and you prayed. Can we be together? Can we walk this um, road together? Can we take this mission and this path together? And I know, I just know I want to be with this person. But maybe in past lives or in past situations, there have been things that have caused this divine masculine to, to perceive that we can't be together. And so they've been praying. There have been also obstacles that this masculine has encountered, just like you've encountered. Some of these obstacles you know about, but there are many you don't know about because... In order for this mission to work, there are so many things during this test that the masculine and the feminine encounter and endure that they don't know anything about the other pertaining to. It's like falling in love with a stranger but knowing that they're your destiny. But knowing that this person is who you are meant to be with. And yeah, it sounds romanticized and it sounds fantastic and fantasyful. But... Imagine feeling that way and then having only a short period of time with that person and then going through all kinds of spiritual uh, shifts and uh, having things fall away, uh, people leaving your life, loss of loved ones through the pandemic, um, you know, loss of loved ones during the quarantine when... You know, you realize, damn, I'm, I'm surrounded by people who, I, I don't know these people. These people don't know me because we've all been living these fake lives. And you realize, you don't, why was I even here? And this is what the masculine is going through. He's like, went through all these shifts. Why was I here? And it's just like, I thought that was love. But I've met something that feels so much bigger than this materialistic, codependent, you know, thing that I used to believe was love. This existence that was based on, you know, what I was taught a relationship should be or how a man should be or how a father should be. And then, boom, destiny steps in and says, hey there's more than this there's deeper than this and and I'm feeling like divine masculine's energy is appealing can we get one more chance can I have another chance and this is an appeal to you maybe in the spirit realm but no baby not to divine feminine this appeal is to higher order because the higher order has been watching the entire time and knows what the masculine has been going through knows what their tests and trials were knows what their shadow work was knows what their curses were knows what their karmics were doing to them and saw the integrity that you could not see but you knew and your soul and your spirit was there but this isn't about you this part is about them now what it says inspiration says take a risk Dare to have life the way you decide. Are you willing to make sacrifices to have what you desire? Desire, I want to say deserve. And I feel like what's happening is the man masculine is finding his voice. And you guys, there is a lot that goes on that people don't speak of. Men can be abused too. Men can be manipulated and mistreated. And they can be sexually assaulted by toxic feminine energies and just because their situation doesn't look like yours or just because they're a man doesn't make their situation any less significant than yours doesn't make them any less a victim than you were now am I giving them excuses for the actions that they have taken 
I'm not giving you excuses either, Divine Feminine. I'm just telling you that this is your twin and they mirror you. So uh, the compassion that is necessary for you both to have, you had to grow into, you had to develop, you had to develop these um, personality traits, you had to develop in your character, you had to develop in your emotional maturity, and um, everything led to you to this point because um, destiny, you know, when they realized this. Okay, mm -hmm. that was quick. Facade. Okay, now we got facade here. And we have this masculine and holding the hands of this little boy child and walking in the clouds. And then there's like this tree here. And this tree is, uh, look like it's seasoned or barren or it's in the winter. But it could very well be about to bud. Let me look, there are no buds on here. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is with this facade card reading it intuitively before I look it up um, I feel like Divine Masculine has some inner child wounds to heal and also I want you guys to know that a lot of these masculines have um, families and have lives they have families and lives outside of you before they met you just like you had a family in life or you had something going on before you met them and just like they turned your world upside down and inside out you did too just like they shook you you shook them too and I feel like a lot of growth has taken place here. And I feel like the Divine Masculine is, is looking back over his life and uh, reevaluating the things that he desired as a child. This is, remember, this destiny is about what do you desire. And it's just not about a romantic connection with the Divine Feminine, even though a, a, the interaction or the connection will exist, whether you guys do any active work on it or not <laughs> it's going to still exist because it is what it is and it will be what it is <laughs> it will be what it be <laughs> um facade here um feeling like it's it's in the past this is feeling like past energy also or like a the retrograde post shadow energy sort of like um Saturn Saturn is in retrograde now and um it's about karma but I'm feeling like is divine masculine is deciding that there's something that I won't need desire and I'm willing to I, I need to remember that I need to remember that I have hopes dreams aspiration goals I'm not a workhorse I'm not um a toy I'm not a, a satisfaction, a sexual satisfaction toy, um, because these toxic relationships, you know, they may have evolved into that. They may not have started out that way, but we all got traumas, and and the trauma creates drama when you don't, uh, uh, when you don't acknowledge it, and work on it if you don't do any form of healing and that was the purpose of you guys inter your introduction to one another was to introduce the healing um i feel like they realized that this life that they had was a facade was um like an illusion an illusion that they created for protection or hold on a second so we're going to look at this facade card and see what it says <clears throat> so the facade card is called bronze god this isn't who I am the Divine Masculine is realizing, he's awakening that things are deeper, like I said, than he, than he once knew, wants to believe. And <laughs> my baby, he said, my daughter said, can I have Jello?" I said, yeah, 
my baby came and said, Wobo Wobo. <laughs> he was like, Could he have Jello? Then he said, Yay. I didn't even get to answer him. He just took off. He was asking, Can I have Jello? Yay. Like, there's this faith that Divine Masculine has that is very childlike and innocent. And it's like, Divine Feminine is like, Can I have it? And then she's waiting for the answer. And then she gets the answer and then she moves forward. Divine Masculine is like, can I have it? Yeah, I can have it. You know, you don't have, Divine Masculine knows that he has this beautiful, innocent energy that's saying, I know I can have it. Yay. You know, I believe I got faith. I can have it. Yay. And you guys, I feel like just that scenario, that omen, what happened with my child just now was showing how Divine Masculine is so blissfully oblivious to how you perceived this journey like they went through their ups their downs their doubts their yes this is good no this can I, you know this is this can't be real um are we gonna be together should we be together can we be together will we be together are we supposed to be together is there such thing as supposed to be together is this the one yes this is the one no that's not the one it can't be the one that is the one you know they went through all of that just like you went through it but it went through different eyes and while you're going on here and you're searching for tarot and you are in the Investigating yourself and you googling every damn thing under the sun sorry for that energetic interruption okay but while you're um you know looking up everything and you're just consuming and eating all this information trying to get as much information as you can like a good steward like a student and you're trying to be the best straight a student ever and you're like but my partner's over there fucking up everything <laughs> you know that's your perception that's what you're perceiving in the 3d and you're like my partner is not on task why y'all group me with this well <laughs> that's you <laughs> That's you. Uh, that's you. That's you. But uh, we'll talk about that later. Um, then the masculine is like, okay, I feel good. Let's take this step. Okay, I feel bad. Step back. Okay, take this step. Take this. They were moving m more intuitive than you were. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you. Let me tell you something. One thing that I have noticed in this journey with my clients. And personally, is that often what you're doing, they're doing. There is not a perfect mirror. Like right now I'm in front of a camera and I'm recording. My twin is probably not somewhere in front of a camera recording. And I don't want to, you know, go into that. But my point is, <laughs> for instance, if you're exploring and getting to know more about yourself, the masculine is exploring and know more about himself. Well, while you're Googling, he's dating. You get what I'm saying? While you're reading a book, he's making new friends or trying on a new woman. I don't know. <laughs> but that sounds negative, doesn't it? No, it does. It's not negative. It's not negative because you don't you and him learn different ways like while you learn by doing this he learns more physically or while you learn more physically he might learn more so by um you know seeing or viewing something he may be a visual learner you may be a hands-on learner but you're both learning the same lessons but it's a customized lesson plan like k-12 supposed to be a customized lesson plan based on you and that's how the divine orchestrated it. So, while you're having a total meltdown, he may be in a karmic situation where someone is attacking him or accusing him because mentally you're attacking and accusing yourself. So it's manifesting physically for him because it's a masculine and you're a feminine and you deal with the intuitive emotional and he dealing with the logical rational so he's having logical rational um, experiences that are triggering him to learn to tap into his intuitive and you're having intuitive emotional experiences that are triggering you and teaching you to start to live in your logical rational so then you're both being given opposing energies to learn the same lesson which is balance <laughs> so 
So here we have Facade, the legend, the bronze boy, Dar Darnell, was young when his father died and he became a man. He became the man of his family. Out for a walk one day, many years later, he was mesmerized by the sight of children playing. As a child, he never played and he hid behind a tree crying bitterly, then quickly burned his, buried his emotions. At the very end of his life, um, on his way to heaven, he stopped at a park and finally reclaimed the inner child that he had left behind many years ago. So, the divine masculine is reclaiming his inner child. If you, many, divine masculine, this particular group, I don't know about everybody's group, but this divine masculine group collective that I'm reading for this particular moment, they left their inner child behind because they had to be the man of the house. They had to grow up early. Maybe you had to do the same thing. Maybe when you were younger, you were more responsible than your siblings. Or you may have been even more responsible than your parents. See, you may have been a very independent child. And your masculine mirrored that same lifestyle. was a very independent child. And because of this, may have never had the opportunity to fully experience childhood. But being able to pick up that inner child and be themselves and be vulnerable and be happy and giddy and you know blindly optimistic you know they weren't allowed that opportunity so they had to leave their inner child behind and they, they had to do grown up things you're a big boy you're the man of the house you know and because of different circumstances and that was all a part of their growth and development however their being um it was their destiny to as they were triggered by the meeting or the interactions with feminine and the lessons that came along with it and all the portals of opportunity that opened because of it then they're able to reflect and um, again with this retrograde post shadow energy and look and see hey look there's a lot of desires that I've had that I missed out on because I was busy being a father I was busy being a husband I was busy being everyone but myself I was being everything to everyone else but there's time for him to reflect and focus on him. And feminines, yeah, I can tell you that your masculine is coming towards you. <clears throat> I can tell you that your masculine is coming towards you. But I'm going to tell you also that's not important. You know why that's not important? Because the healing is important. The growth is important. And yes, you love for that to happen. You love for that to happen. But really, let's just focus. This isn't about you. Okay? So, what's happening Okay, because I, I hear it, I feel it. Um, <laughs> for those who um, were like, well, I'm asking them to come towards me. I don't care what you say. Yes, it is the truth. However, I want you to keep in mind, as you have become or as you are becoming a more balanced individual in your logical, rational, along with your emotional, intuitive, feminine brain, take your logical, rational. And if he's exiting a karmic situation, then there needs to be a time for him to adjust and to settle in his own energy before he and you introduce. And I'm speaking loosely with the terms you guys are he and she because that's how I grew up. Now, if you are um, same-sex couples, then you apply the masculine and feminine energy where they go. But I'm just simply not going to bow to all these different um terms when I'm from a whole nother generation and yes I can change but I'm not finna waste my time with all these terminologies you just apply it how it resonates and forgive me for my truth <laughs> so um cause I I, I, I I know that there are other people in different communities and different genders and what's the word uh I ain't no good, y'all. I ain't shit. If you want to say hey shit, you can say hey shit. Uh, preferences. I think that's the word. But um, read the energy as they resonate. You know who. We all carry masculine and feminine energies. Put the energy where it goes. Like, and don't get hung up on my terminology. Because sometimes I say God. But I don't say God in my own personal life. I do that for y'all sometimes. I say Yahweh. I say Divine. I say the Most High. You know. So, when I'm talking about source, when I'm talking about uh, a, a entity or power greater than us, you call it what you want to call it. But, I digress. 
throw that off my aura. The point is, the masculine is a uh, reclaiming. He that and realizing that he had hidden himself away, being a a slave to society, being a slave to fear, being a slave in general. Could have been a sexual slave to people who he felt like he wanted he had to please to so that they wouldn't retaliate against him or mistreat him. He had to be a slave to his belief systems about if he has children about parenthood and the views of of society on fathers, if he is a black man, black fathers, if he has grown up in a place where or a environment where men were extinct or non existent or you know, you very even few saw a male, you know. Maybe he didn't have those things growing up and so his whole life he was striving to be that thing that he didn't have and that's what he was to so many people. He was a guide just like you are a guide. He is a healer just like you are a healer. He is a star just like you are a star. And he's realizing that. He's speaking up for himself. And he's realizing he deserves the best God got for him just like you do. He deserves to be happy just like everyone else and in your logical rational mind you need to understand that yes on my way doesn't mean that immediately I'm around the corner. It could very well mean that I need to have my own place for a while. I need to get established. I need to feel like what it feels to be by myself but with you like if they're transitioning from a karmic family like maybe they live with relatives and there's a transition that may have to take place where this masculine may need to get his own place and live by himself everybody's I've been hearing a lot of people saying the masculine needs a place to live masculine needs a place to live oh your masculine is coming to live with you oh your masculine coming to live with you everybody that's not everybody's path everybody now don't want to live together they want to be together but Everybody's not ready for that. That may not be their path at this moment. There may be something else. And some of these journeys are long, y'all. These are lifelong journeys. This is not... It's saying staying true to myself makes me truly happy. So, um, that's why I just want to read the I Am out to you guys. But, um, it's just... This is general reading. But I was just trying to give you guys generalizations about the possibilities of when these readers are telling you guys what the energy is or that your masculine is coming. Yes, on my way. On my way. How far away is it? How long does it take? It's up to the divine that answer. Well, on his way to heaven, on his way to the higher consciousness, on his way to the divine connection on his way to fulfilling the destiny he had to stop and pick up his inner child that he didn't allow so you might be saying my masculine was acting childish if he never got a chance to be a child why judge him for it if you never got a chance to be yeah, someone might say, example um you might have grown up feminine and you were surrounded by a lot of toxic masculinity and so you put on to protect yourself you wore baggy clothes you know you might have had some incestuous or uh, pedophiles around you when you was growing up and then this could be the energy you know you may i don't know what you actually experienced but a lot of people i've heard very 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 profound stories of what feminines and masculines have overcome on this journey and have stood in the face of and understand the enemy is going to attack you more than anything else anyone else being who you are and having the mission that you have and let's just say feminine you never showed your beauty you hid your beauty you were uh <laughs> like me for the example I wore my hair in braids going back on my head. Not the cute braids that the girls had with the beads on it. Mm -mm. I look like 
I did the thug braids, just straight back, no makeup. I wasn't allowed to wear makeup as a child anyway. My father wouldn't allow it. So, okay, no makeup, plain face, uh, little studded earrings. Wasn't allowed to wear those big earrings and stuff like that. No jewelry. And because uh, there was a there was an energy that made me feel like I wasn't safe looking feminine and attractive, um, I hid my body. Because I developed and bloomed early. So adult men were looking at a third grader like, whoa. <laughs> you know? So I hid it under baggy clothes and I dressed like a boy. And I allowed them to believe that I was, um, you know, they would call me names and say that I was, you know, gay. And I, I didn't care because that was the way I protected myself. As And, and so when I got older and I began to explore my femininity then those energies and those triggers came up again and I was like oh no hide this again so I went right back into those you know that kind of energy my point is because I didn't get a chance to be feminine and dainty when I was younger because it wasn't it was safer perceived by me as safer not to now that I'm older and I own myself, <laughs> I own my beauty, I own my curves, I own my curls, I own my, you know, cheeks, uh, you know. So I, I explore my femininity in looking softer and beautiful and, you know, dainty and girly. And even though my voice is still a little, you know, low, my point is those things that you may have had to leave behind in the past you can do that now that you're free from all those restrictions and this is what the masculine is doing he's freeing himself from those restrictions he's freeing himself from those um, stipulations those stigmas those expectations all that weight that was placed on him and yet all that weight that was placed on him and expectations of duties but he was never trusted to actually perform them he was never really given a chance because the expectations were to expect you to do it but also and simultaneously they expected you to fail miserably and this energy that came to him at all directions it was always attacking him felt like the whole world was trying to kill him all the whole world was against him and he felt like he had to prove himself to everyone else so he had a face for everyone but when he met you you're, he was his true self with you he's only him tr his true self with you but you this connection is teaching him you have taught him through your example and he's taught you through his example. You both were following each other's lead. Look at this. Look at this. Like they're making an agreement. I will always follow you. I will always listen to you. I will help you. I will always guide you. This that agreement. Learning to be your authentic self. Not just with one another. But with everybody with everything learning you have a voice and you will not be silenced you will not be mistreated by masculine is no longer being silenced it's no longer being mistreated he's no longer being manipulated or threatened threatened to not be able to see his children threatened to not be able to get a job threatened because you came from that background and we know this and that about you and blah 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 threatened because of his mistakes not given the opportunity just because what he looks like where he comes from what his folks are all these kinds of things now there is an inspiration that goes with this legend and it says if you are unhappy in your relationships you may be relating to others through a false sense of duty give up being something you're not and that's what divine masculine is doing he's giving up being something he's not he's walking in his authenticity and he is leaving those people behind i just saw 39 19 on the clock you might want to check that angel number 
So this bronze god, and I love that it's the bronze god because you guys um you black man. <laughs> uh, this bronze god is reclaiming life. You know, it says that, you know, what have I done to heal my childhood pain? And that's exactly what Divine Masculine is asking himself before he moves forward. And reevaluating. It's like I'm just stuck on the bronze god thing, y'all. That made me hype. I feel excited about the bronze god coming. <laughs> okay. Um Disassociating from self and reclaiming life and healing childhood pain, recovering integration and play. And he's learning to have fun in life again. To recapture that joy, to recapture that optimism. Uh, and, and there's this new beginning energy, this very fresh energy. I'm going to give a third card, you guys, just because I love to make sure I work in threes. Okay, we got vanity here. So first we were talking about um, walking away, realizing that this is not who you are. This is not who you're meant to be. You have a distant path, divine masculine. And this is like I'm walking away because this sense of duty isn't strong enough to keep me here and trap me in unhappiness and misery forever. We got vanity here. We got vanity here. Okay. And what I'm seeing here right off is, first of all, <laughs> I got two things that I just saw with this card. Sorry about the blur. I'm bringing it back. Okay, this uh, entity that's appearing here is reminding me of this destiny card here. Um, where Remember I read and I told you that this great being appeared and granted them their wish. Just in the midst of living that vain life. Vanity. The uh, scripture says uh, in Song of Solomon, he was talking about things being vanity and grasping at the wind. Vanity means meaningless. That's what vanity means, meaningless. So while he was living this facade of a life, then the divine appeared to him. And uh, I feel like not only that, but he became divine. He began to recognize his divinity within himself. Because I'm getting this Merlin wizard energy right here where he's learning to transmute energy. And he's saying, look, this is who I am. In this crowd of people who have their fancy drinks and their fancy dresses and their designer clothes and glasses. And he's saying, I'm really an ancient sage. I'm here and I've been here and I've been oppressed and I've been depressed and I've been suppressed. But this is who I truly am. And there's this look up, this fierce look on his face of not necessarily anger, but how dare you? How dare you have mistreated me like this? And but it's also a I'm no longer tolerating this. This how 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 dare I not know how wonderful I am? And I'm feeling like that's what that, that energy is intuitively on the card. The divine masculine is realizing I have the power to change the situation. I have the power to shift this. But also these people that who are in my life. They're, they're karmic and um, I'm karmic to them too that there are some things that I may have triggered for their growth and development they've triggered for my growth and development and me being this enlightened being being this divine being that I am I have a duty and a responsibility to be an example to the world be an example to those around me and that duty and responsibility he saw as you know he put on this facade to be that duty and that responsibility but there was also a spiritual duty and responsibility for him to fulfill his destiny and step into the fullness of who he is and to do this walk in integrity so with the vanity card it says I need more, better, bigger. Yes, that will make me okay. And, and I feel like with this facade energy, that's the energy that the masculine was in. I was in, I need more, bigger, better. And that was the, the material realm. That was the mastering of the material world. But that balance that needed to come into place was the um, adapting his divine feminine energy within himself. Causing that energy to heal so that and, and to rise up so that it could heal his masculine energy. And heal that inner child energy with that nurturing, loving, 
um, nature of divine feminine energy within. So, um, again, walking away from the idea that the material world is abundance and chasing the material world for the chasing of that abundance because the masculine's job is to secure. That doesn't just mean secure what I already have. That's secure the future. That's protect. That's provide. That is the energy. That is its purpose. Uh, and, and the idea that if I don't have the tools of this world to do so, but being the magician, learning that as the magician, you have all the tools you need to obtain whatever it is that you desire, whatever it is that is required for you and your family. He's realizing that he is that already. He already embodies that form of abundance. So I'm saying here, Crystal, Peter, and Mike are at a party and Mike's uh, posh home toasting success in their businesses a mysterious old man appears and asks them whether they prefer gluttony or generosity puzzled on them puzzled none of them answered he reminds them that more does not mean better and they laugh suddenly they are alone far from the party in raising water we're getting more cries Peter Rain falls and water rises faster. Play! shouts Crystal. We must do well with what we have. As this began, they have fun in the water and the rain stops. So as long as the Divine Masculine was searching and reaching for more, bigger, better in this life, in this material realm, it began to rain. It began to shake things up. And at first they might have perceived, I'm getting more, I'm getting more, I'm getting more. And when you realize he was told, they were told more is not better. They realized that as they were getting more money, they weren't necessarily feeling any better. They, the situation wasn't getting any better in their home. It, as you was doing more work, wasn't necessarily getting better. Because I have to tell people this, I remind you. Wherever you go, you take you with you. Wherever you go, you take you you with you. And that has a twofold meaning. Wherever you go, you take you with you. And the first meaning is you're going to be wherever you go. You need to be comfortable with yourself. You need to love yourself. That's the only person that's guaranteed to be with you 100% no matter where you go. But also, wherever you go, you take you with you. If you bring toxicity, then that goes with you when you leave a place. It goes with you when you leave a relationship. It goes with you if you are in that energy. It goes with you when you're alone and you're consumed by it within yourself, within your thoughts, within your emotions, within your activities, within your habits, within your personality traits. If you are an abundant, loving, kind person who brings prosperity and triggers change wherever you go, you take that with you. Everything goes with you. The energy is yours. It goes wherever you go. So, masculine is realizing this change has to be intrinsic. It has to happen inside of me. And I need to learn how to play and have fun and be content with what I have and not always grasping for more. It's all vanity and grasping at the wind. You can never have enough wind. You can never have enough air. There is an abundant surplus of it that you can't even prove exists. But you you, you know your lungs expand. <laughs> you know if you hold your breath, you're going to know you're holding your breath. <laughs> but Crystal. Crystal is saying play. Let's have fun with what we have. Yes, times were hard, but the masculine made it so that he did not lose his hope. So when you saw him hanging out and partying, or if you perceived these are things you saw, that he was going out with his family and he's laughing, he's making do with what he has he's being happy with what he has and because he's in that attitude of gratitude naturally things flow to him when you wonder I mean the people even wonder how was the masculine able to manifest such great things seemingly 
meaning seamless not meaninglessly effortlessly effortlessly manifest such great things it's because it's his natural energy his nature he has a pure spirit despite perceived actions intentions experiences if you choose to only see the negative, you will only ever see the negative. If you choose to see the beauty of the soul, you will always see the beauty of the soul. And so, this being in forefront right now, this is to ask you feminines, is your masculine, is you're being told over and over again, your masculine is on his way. What are your expectations? Do you have any? What are your perceptions? What are you perceiving? What are you seeing? Because what you're perceiving is what is, is in alignment with your beliefs. Is in alignment with your expectations. So if there is to be a shift for you to experience what's already presently here. Then you need to shift that perspective depending on whether or not it feels right to you. If you're telling yourself a story of we'll never be together. Uh, if you're telling yourself a story of this will never work out then one you're sending that signal to your masculine two you're manifesting that you're creating that because you are a manifester you are a creator you are active conscious purposely intentionally manifesting that three you will only ever see signs that point to those things that you have been telling yourself Four, you're killing your hope. And five, you are manifesting against your true heart's desire, which is inauthentic. Yes, I just called you fake. So, <laughs> we're going to um take this over to the extended, but... I'm going to read the inspiration. It says that we all say we will stop when we have enough, but there's never enough. We may be looking outside, uh, you may be looking outside yourself for validation. And in the past, masculine energy was looking outside himself for validation. And this journey has taught him to look within. And that's beautiful. And that's growth. And I bow to you, kings, who have been on this journey and have master so many things um but also these are some questions that the masculine may be asking themselves am i feeling disconnected from the people around me am i um growing away from limiting relationships or yeah from limiting relationships and this is what the masculine is doing so i'm feeling like in land in, in just just con conclusion the masculine is stepping into his divine masculine energy he's stepping into his divinity he's stepping into his life purpose he's stepping into his soul mission he's stepping into his truth and his authenticity and he's doing some major bounds and leaps and healing and I've been told this and I've been telling people this that feminists it may have taken you longer to go on this um, journey you may have had years into it and you might and it might be 10 years that you've been on this journey you might have been journey, on this journey your whole life and boom you meet your masculine and then some things are fast tracked but when your masculine met you, boom, that was the beginning of his journey. And because you're on separate timelines, because you move at a different pace. And the universe took yours a little, a little slower because you needed to develop patience. But masculine, when masculine is on mission, masculine is gone. He going to run up and catch up and drag your ass right home with him while you're sitting there waiting on him you needed to be working on your mission you need to be working on yourself you need to be finding out what's your divine purpose what it is that you're supposed to be doing because and you're supposed to be actively doing and actively working on that and bettering yourself because when the masculine comes the masculine comes to take over to regulate to discipline to to bring structure so when that energy comes in balanced and your energy is balanced then now you guys can accomplish more together but divine masculine is very patient and he will never come until you're ready and that's beautiful to know and while you're trying to rush it he's patiently waiting because he knows you're not ready yet 
Are you ready? Get ready. <laughs> like TDJ said, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Um, because masculine is 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 being prepared and and is prepared to come towards you and to step into his purpose and mission. But first, he has to disconnect from these um limiting relationships because he's bigger than this scenario that he's been told over and over again. He's bigger than the story that someone else has placed him as the main character in for their lives and for their purposes and their intentions and their agendas. And he's realizing I'm a creator too. So some things are, these are key ideas so the masculine may have been experiencing these things. Environmental tension living in illusion self-doubt power to change this is but realizing he has the power to change lesser companions may have been with lesser companions because of low self-worth low self-esteem so you're scraping the bottom of the barrel with your choice of companionship because you don't realize you're worth so much more than that so you took the company of dirt y'all I'm give y'all you're a diamond and you rolling around in the dirt uh making friends with the roly polies when there are other crystals that are just as precious as you that could help your resonance being in the dirt and being covered with mud you got People who didn't realize your value. Well, they realized your value, but they didn't want you masculine to realize your value. Because if you realized your value, then they couldn't get that diamond, that unicorn quality from you. Uh, I told, I was talking, and I was talking about masculine being a unicorn. Like they're a diamond in the rough. They are a whole mythical, magical creature. But they're surrounded by people who do not acknowledge it and who actually... Um, abuse that beautiful creature and feminine is looking at masculine like I just want an opportunity to experience and appreciate that beautiful creature but that beautiful creature could never accept that love if that beautiful creature never realized who he is same thing likewise divine feminine you had to do you had to realize who you are before you could accept any love from the masculine that you've been uh, chasing begging and pleading and asking and waiting for an answer for that you already have because you already are connected you already have a purpose and a joint mission so you're asking for something over and over again like a child not realizing that your daddy already gave it to you he's asking for things and he's like yeah he didn't even wait for the answer he already knew it is <laughs> so you have very different experiences as you go on this mission. Um, faith, awareness, and transformation are here. So, I'm going to close this reading here. And 5757 57 on the clock. So, look up that angel number. Uh, join me in the extended as I read for the divine feminine. And depending on how long it takes me to do that, there may be a part three extended to read for the union so i thank you guys for watching i love you and i'll see you next time bye